a new season, the Spring 2011 edition Breaking the Huddle. Uh, I'm your host, Darren Basmachin, and with me this week in the Law and Order episode of Breaking the Huddle is Leo Gervais. Just, as, just so you guys know, the way we're doing it this year, changing it up yet again, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one interviews from now on. So it's my honor and privilege to have head referee of Flag Plus Football, Leo Gervais. First of all, Leo, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, we'll start off, since obviously you've been in the league since 2006. Uh, you had a lot of experience in this league, but the big change was in winter 2011, you were named head referee of Flag Plus Football. So I want to know, what was your evaluation of the refereeing up to that point, having been a referee in the league? What, what needed to be done? Well, uh, as you said, I, I've been a referee for a long time in the league, and uh, I was watching it kind of as a referee, not as a manager of the referees, which is sort of what I am now. So it was, I had, my perspective was, uh, you know, we, we needed to have some better rules knowledge, some better mechanic, like more consistent mechanics, uh, and also make sure that the guys were on time and in good position to make calls. So all that to say, so those are like three or four things that we, when I took over as the head referee or referee in chief, uh, with Rob we discussed and with some of the more senior referees and we tried to put some things in place. For example, one of the things we did was uh, we started a rules committee, an official rules committee comprised of three referees and some other people from the league and we affected some major changes in the rules and to make things more consistent in the rule book from season to season. Before it was a little bit kind of hairy scary and we had some good things in place but you can always have improvement so that was the first thing. Second thing is we continued the tradition of having a, a referee on the discipline committee and I had done it the year before and I put George Latter in there and he's a senior ref for flag for many years now. So to have some consistency and I spoke with him and, and the, by the way the discipline committee a lot of people know this if you have a complaint against a referee you can also make a complaint to the discipline committee about a referee not just about a player or whatever so we're trying to make the league more fun more you know uh, and interesting and entertaining for everybody so. and, and kind of giving everyone a voice I guess yeah, exactly that's a point. I mean let's face it uh, obviously the referees are the, the final say on the field that's why they're there but we want to give players a chance you know if they don't like a call or they don't like maybe uh, someone's attitude and, We've had a few things, like there hasn't been technically a reprimand of a referee, but I've written to certain guys, I've certainly spoken to many guys, just little things like, you know, be more polite with the player. Uh, you know, let's try not to throw flags if we don't have to. Explain to, especially in the lower divisions, you know, hey, buddy, you're offside, like, don't go offside, this is why I would call that penalty. In the higher divisions, it's, I don't want to say it's no mercy, but the guys know the rules and we sort of, we're, we're a little bit tougher. You know, but in like, let's say, for example, in the spring, in C and D, I would warn the guy, you know, if he's, let's say, I'm talking to another player or, let's say he uh, went offside, or he did something like was contributing the, the regulations, but I'm not going to throw a flag. We're always trying to say, how can we not throw a flag? That's the, the mark of a good official. How can you prevent throwing a flag? And do you feel like that's a shift in policy from, from the start, or is, just, is this just more of a focus that you're placing on that rather than other things? Well, I can just say from my perspective, that was never emphasized to me before by anybody who was in you know, a superior position as a head referee. It was sort of like, let's do our games or whatever, and there's a lot of focus on the pregame and these things. And I'm more concerned, a lot more concerned about what's happening on the field and also the way that the officials are conducting themselves with the players and that they're most importantly in a position to make a call. Are we going to make every call? Definitely not. Are we going to miss calls? Yes. Are we going to make mistakes? Like It's just like I always tell guys, you know, football is the perfect game. It's coached and played and refereed by imperfect people. You know, but if you're in a good position, you know you're you have a chance to make a good play. Just like if you're in a good position, you might make the catch or the tackle. Same thing in refereeing, and we just we're trying to be the best we can. You know, perfection is impossible, but uh, excellence is certainly in uh, within our grasp, and that's what we're shooting. For. So, so we spoke a little bit about um, the top-down communication, putting focus on certain things, and we spoke a little bit on mechanics. Were there any other changes or uh, added things that we, we that were implemented by you or by the management in itself going into the winter season up till now? Yeah, another thing we did, uh, we started evaluating referees. And, you know, as you know, I'm a tackle referee, and in tackle, uh, we have evaluations like at the end of the year and. Uh, to get promoted in tackle football as a referee, you have to have a certain amount of evaluations and you know score certain things on tests and stuff. So we had our first kind of a test. It was like a quiz. It was like a take home, and uh, the guys didn't have to provide their marks. It was the first year we did it, so we sort of took it easy on them. And uh, but it was just for them to get into the rule book. We want the guys to get into our rule book, which is very similar to you know it's also similar to touch and tackle. It's sort of a hybrid of the two. And uh, in the valuations, it was more for the younger guys that hadn't done a lot of seasons in flag. And just, it wasn't a thing to promote guys necessarily like we would do in tackle, but it was to say like, okay, like this game, you you know, you know maybe you're out of position, or this game, you could have done this. And one of the things we always stress is, you know, try to find something positive about what the guy did and build from that. Like, we all have things we can improve on. 
Like, you know, it's one thing just that, like, some people are, take the tactic of, like, oh, I gotta hammer the guy, here's everything he did wrong, and let him, you know, fend for himself. That's not the way I try to, to do it with the guys. I try to get each other, help all, you know, everybody helps each other out, communicate, and stuff like that. So, the evaluation process was quite a new thing for us, you know, so, I think it was useful, especially for the younger guys. You know? and, and then, f further on that, um, now we've had one season with you in charge, with the rules, the changes, the focuses, and the evaluation. How do you feel that your referees have responded so far, in general? Yeah, well, you know, I used to work in the, the newspaper business a long time. In sales, they always say, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I definitely think we're getting better. You know, we're not quite where, where I'd like us to be, but I think we're improving all the time. And uh, that, I guess maybe that sounds like a standard answer. But I, I believe that a lot of the players, the feedback that I got from players was they thought generally the refereeing was better. You know, of course, there's always the odd call or a close call you don't like, and et cetera, et cetera. But I think generally they've, we've improved in the, in the officiating of flag plus. I do believe that. And is, it, what, is there anything that now going into this new season that you felt, okay, well, we tried it this way for, for one season, it's gotten better, but there's another focus or another shift we can do to kind of help these referees take it to the next step. Is there any adjustment you've made halfway through now? Yeah, the new adjustment would be like some of the undergrads that we brought in, they would start in the back, like as the, uh, kind of like the back judge in the two-man system. And some of those guys, like uh, like a Jason Leclerc, for example, he's a younger official, I would like give him more games as a head referee, and I would, let's say, for example, let's say I'm one of the senior guys, I would go in the back and let those guys sort of like uh, take their, their chance, you know, like prendre ta place, as they say in French, and let them have a chance to affect uh, a game, you know, as a, an official that has a head of a uh, referee, you see what I mean? So everyone's got to be able to ramp up their game, and I'm always challenging the guys, I'll try to give them a little bit higher games if they're, if they're not doing the higher levels. Or I'll make them a head referee, and we all need to be challenged. I think you know, so not all the time and not every game, but so that's the idea: is to bring some of those younger guys. So when some of those old war horses, when they finally put us out to pasture, we'll have somebody actually to take over. So that's always the thing, you know. It's like in martial arts, you know, they say like a sensei is a master, but a real master doesn't create great students; he creates other masters. So when I'm finished, you know, one day it will come to pass. I'm hoping that the guys that work with us and you know work with me and stuff, they'll say, hey, that guy really he helped me become a better official. Like he helped me realize my potential. That's what I'm I'm trying to do with the guys. It's not to say like I know more than you or whatever. Like it's say point out some things that they're maybe not doing right. Let them you know let them try. They're gonna make some mistakes and then we go from there. And I think that a lot of the guys have responded, and especially the older guys like. Uh, uh, you look at a guy like Tom Cesare, you look at a guy like George Ladder, uh, Stefan Beaupre, these guys were really great with uh, the younger officials, so that's what I was looking for, and it's been great, you know, these guys are top rated. Uh, yeah, officials. well, because in the end, you can't do it all, right? You have to delegate a little oh, bit. 100%, like, guys. I'm just one guy, so these guys have all helped us uh, tremendously, and a lot of the young guys have responded well, and, and like I always tell the young guys, I want you to hustle, I want you to run, even if you make a mistake, do it at 100 miles an hour, you know, the worst thing is a lazy referee, yeah. you know, and, you know, for sure, you know, you do four or five games, you're retired or whatever, you got to give that last game, the, those last two teams, the best game you got, you know, just like the first game you got. And that's, so that's what we try to do. So I think in that sense, the mentality of the guys, and I feel they, they can come to me if they don't like something or whatever, I hope that they can, you know. And um, and I think it's so far it's gone really well. And a lot of guys have, you know, let's say somebody misses a game, they can take a game on or so. I think it's been great. The guys have been really great for us uh, so far, just speaking as the assignment, you know. Yeah. All right, well now moving on from, from your role as head referee, let's mm. talk about your role as a referee. Mm. Obviously in the Winter 2011 Division I Finals, you knew I was going to get to this at sure. some point. Uh, there was quite the controversial finish, it's, it's online, a little plug for the road show, which, uh, which we all worked Watch very hard to put together. Yeah. Um, but we obviously the angles are not fantastic, but you were standing right there, just to quickly go over it again. Uh, what happened is a, the, uh, the Expo, not the Expo, sorry, the old school receiver made a catch. Um, it was uh, the wrist Kuskuna, sorry, uh, made the catch. Uh, he was deflagged before he got full possession of the ball, and nobody touched him after that. He made it into the end zone, and that ended up being the game winning touchdown with two plays left, I believe. Um, now, obviously, you were standing right there. So I want you to explain to me, first of all, what is the call that you made on the field? So go, go, let's start there, and then we'll move on to what you Yeah, what I saw, like, and, and like I always tell people, you know, and of course, obviously, some of the Expos guys, and these are. First rate of players like Chad Wires, Ricky Martin, these are great guys, you know? And a couple of them, one Ricky Martin said, he goes, he goes, Leo, he goes, you're a great ref. He goes, that wasn't a great call. And you know, I, I appreciate that sentiment, you know? Because even after he said no hard feelings and it's tough, you know, you're putting out your heart and soul, all yeah. your you know, love and passion, adrenaline in the game, and it comes down to that. That's a tough call, you know? The way I saw it was a guy came across, ball was coming in, and the guy got deflagged, and he definitely didn't have possession of the ball. That that was what I saw. Yeah. And the guy, so I didn't blow my whistle because no one tagged him, he didn't have a flag on, and then he got possession of the ball. No one flagged him, the guy took off, went to the end zone, 
And after, like, and the play was still going on, so I followed the guy, I came back and threw the flag. In, in hindsight, the only thing I would do differently is I would try to throw the flag right away so the guys would, would know that there was a flag of some kind. But the thing was, it was like a bang-bang play. We're talking like instantaneous milliseconds, you know? And uh, just for the record, like Rob Campana says, uh, you know, Rob and I are, are our friends and I work with him and all that. And he said, he goes, oh, I'm not sure about that call. And a few other people are certain. Other people said, oh, that was the right call. And it was a really tough call. And uh, it was like bang, bang, instantaneous. And that's the way I saw it, you know? The guy got the flag before he had possession. Before he had possession. Yeah. Now, the, the argument would be that, uh, and this is basically dependent, because in the rule book, it is not clear beyond what, uh, I can give you the exact rule it has. Is yeah. if, if a player not in possession of the ball loses his flag during a play, he remains eligible to catch a pass. If he catches a pass, the player must be touched by a defender with one hand to be called down. Exactly. Now, obviously, he didn't have possession, but the question is degrees of possession. Now, in speaking with other people, they argue that they say, well, he did touch it, but he didn't have possession. And is where do you draw the line on that? So you personally now, you've seen the replays. Uh, oh, yeah. You've, you've, you've gone through it. It's not in the heat of the moment. Do you regret the call? Would you change anything about the call? Uh, it's, it's always a tough game to play, but, I mean, this, this is a good... Form for you to say that if yeah, you, do you believe you made the right call still, or yeah, well, you, see, would like, you have adjusted it based on that? Here's the thing, and, and, I, and I'm just trying, I'm trying to look at it like, oh, I'm not the guy. Yeah. So I was in position to make the call, and I could clearly see if the guy got flagged or deflagged. And yeah. The two angles that you have when you see, one is from behind, the yeah. other way you can see from nothing. The, the side one I've only seen it once or twice, and it's kind of like, nah, you they're, know, they're, they're they're not very. Uh, there's no there's no judgment you can make from that. Exactly. But I, well, the one thing you can definitely see is that the flag does come off before he has full possession of the ball. Exactly. So that the rule does apply there. And as you know, the whistle did not go. Yeah. And I, I think if I, you know, uh, in defense of the call, yeah. just as the call not me, but the Expos, when they didn't hear a whistle, they should have tagged it. Absolutely. And we even spoke about that on the road show after. Yeah. That was the number one mistake I had to see from, some, from somebody in Division One. It's a little bit surprising because until you hear the whistle, you got to keep playing. Uh, exactly. But, you know, it was a close call and I can understand why they didn't tag the guy because, oh, he just got deflagged. Yeah. But from my, I mean, I had the best angle out there, you know. Uh, George, who was the head referee, he was on the sideline. He wouldn't have seen that. Like, he yeah. would have had the angle, like, with the receiver running towards him. So, really, I'm the only guy, and I guess that I in the sky, if you yeah. want to call it that. But, if you, like you said, you saw it. The guy is definitely deflagged before it catches me. And possession means you have possession of the ball, like, you are actually holding the ball mm -hmm. in the field of play. Okay, and if you step out of bounds, in this league it's going to be uh, two yeah. feet, right? You have to, and he stayed inbounds, but he has to actually have possession of the ball before he's deflagged. So, that's that's your judgment, is that it, it really has to be full position. It's not a case of... The ah. second he touches it, then it's kind of the act of possession, and then the flag. That's that's, that's, the, way that's, that's the way you would rule. Exactly. It. So that's the and that's what I call. So so then no change in your. Well, and I know that some of the expo guys. I, I heard that you know they said all oh, the IRS are arguing whatever because the head referee asked me though was he bobbling or whatever and all I said was I said the guy did not have possession and he was deflagged. That was never that has never changed. You know I'm not saying it's the greatest call or whatever. I'm just saying this is what I saw. Yeah. You know, and that's all I can go with. And I, I can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overturn the call, especially after seeing the video. The guy, it's not like the guy catches it. Oh, and then he gets the flag and then he runs into. No, the it's guy. not an obvious no, it's, thing. Oh, 100 really percent not. That, yeah. And that's so you know it was kind of a bang bang play. And it was a tough call. And uh, but like I say, I always say to guys, you got to call what you see and see what you call. And that's what I tried to do there. Was it the right call? I think well, it was. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of so people that dispute it, and yeah. I'm sure the, the expert guys will uh, go to their grave. Well, yeah, of course. Which is, and you know what? And I, I give full credit to the Eskimos guys because I'm sure if I was playing, I'm sure I would have went off on the referee, and those guys stayed pretty calm. You know, like, considering, yeah, considering absolutely. the circumstances. Oh, Two plays left, you just came I back. And, like I said, Ricky Martin, like guy came, literally, guy came literally up to me, and I appreciated that. You know, he appreciates that. You know, even if it's called that he didn't like or if it was wrong, he still has respect for the official that's calling it. And that's, to me, another thing that we've done with the league. I want the, the players to respect the officials. Like I said, it's not always, this might not even be a correct call. I don't know. I, I, to me, it seemed... There's no way of knowing it. Yeah, to me, it seemed like the right call, but it was close. All right, so end of story, you still stick with that call. You believe you made the right call? 150%. Oh, okay. it's a tough call, though, for sure. So we'll move on now. Great. And we'll, we'll, we'll go from your role as a referee in a game. Let's go to your dual role. Obviously, you've played a couple seasons in this league. Mm -hmm. uh, you played with Rage and Vicious Canucks. Anybody yep. else I'm forgetting? Or is it no, that's it. That's those it. are the two seasons. All right, so now, uh, obviously, uh, you had that experience as a referee going into the game. Uh, then you had a little experience as a player. Did that change anything after you had played those seasons? Did it change the way you refereed, or was your experience as a referee, did it change the way you played? Uh, either or. We can start with uh, if it affected your refereeing. 
Yeah, if you've, you know, uh, like I, and I was a player a long time ago in tackle back in the Jurassic era, but I did play, you know. And I always tell the referees, go, remember, these guys are, A, you know, they're paying to play, they want to play, they want to have fun, and uh, we're there to administer the game. No one cares, you know, who we are at the end of the game. And I think the best game you can have as a referee, when someone says, hey, who were the referees in the game? I don't remember. That's what you want. You don't want people to remember you. You know, yeah. like I'll be remembered in the Division One final, you know, <laughs> right? People will remember. No, and it, I mean, it's just say it was a tough call or whatever. But so the thing is that so as a as a referee, you know, as a player, I know what it's like. You know, you get full of adrenaline. And guys, nine times out of ten, when a guy says something to you or whatever, and looks a little bit unkind, or he talks about your mother or your sister, or your mother and your sister together or whatever, and they say, "Ref, you know, I'm really sorry what I said." I say, "You know what? I, I understand. I, I mean, where you are, and I under, I do understand what the players." Even though it's been, you know, I played flag not too long ago, but you know, it's it's hard when you're full of adrenaline to be rational, you know, yeah. like you're juiced up and hyped up. And I just tell guys, stay in control and try to, you know, try to be polite as, as you can, even if you don't like the call. But but you know? see that that's like an experience that you have just as a player in general. But I'm mm. saying after having played in flag, did that change anything? Did, yeah, it, did well, it allow you to improve your refereeing in any way? Um, doesn't have to have. <laughs> I'm yeah, not looking for you. Well, answer. I guess the thing is like. Because flag, the different thing is like uh, the field's much smaller and stuff. Yeah. So you, like as a referee, you can anticipate kind of plays. Like you see a lot of sort of similar plays like wheels or yeah. you guys do like long down the seam plays. And you sort of recognize kind of combinations, especially if you're like certain teams, like, you know, you might know the Kings or the Monarchs yeah. or the Demons. And you know the kind of plays they run. And if you, or if you played against those teams or like I played in, in Division Three, but so a lot of the teams I had seen before, I know the guys. And you, you certainly definitely get to know the best players, who they are, like Hiroshi or, uh, you know, Carmine or all these people. So you've almost pre-scouted the teams basically yeah I guess you you a little say, bit of an advantage yeah and I'd say psychologically I know them before the game I'll, I'll you know I'll tell Gino you know a certain kind of hey I'm watching you or Carmine let's let's not have too much talking or and these guys know me and they'll joke around a bit and they know I'm kind of half kidding and so that it helps you and knowing the players actually is more of an advantage than actually having played to be honest with you and that's you know, you're not friends with the players, but you want to be friendly, and I think that's the message that we try to send to the officials. You know, be polite, be friendly. You know, make your call, see what you call, call what you see, and leave it there. You know, going a bit further on that note, you've been consistently singled out as one of the players' favorite referees in Rayhan's End of the Year Star mm -hmm. Awards. Uh, I don't know how many referee of the years you want. Almost as many Mokan Awards as Mokan has won. But um, so let let me ask you, what do you think it is about you that that makes the players uh, connect to you so much? You know, it's a, try, it's, try and sound humble here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, like Rayhan's a, he's a good guy, and you know, he's a good guy until I call him for pass interference, and yeah. he always looks at me and goes, well, how did I call you for best referee? And so I, I think trying to be consistent, even if I know the guys, they flag guard, they PI, you're trying to see the game as a game, guys are moving pieces, like pieces on a chessboard, and you're just trying to adjudicate the pieces moving, you know? So I've never tried to say, oh, like, well, you know, Rashti, he, he wouldn't pass interference, he yeah. would, you know? Or Darren, or whoever, right? Whoever's playing, right? And I think the thing is, it's, it's all, to me, it's a question of respect. I try to respect the players, let them have fun, but uh, especially like you know the UR and OC, that's we really have zero tolerance for that. And I tell the guys that you know, say let you play. And the guys always say, hey, let us play, let us play. Well, the, how large are your parameters of let us play, right? Like when we get allow interference, and you know, in the higher divisions, like it's a little bit different. Guys are smarter, they're more subtle in the PI and pass interference and things. So I think it's just a question of respect. You're asking, like, you know, I don't know, you know, it's nice to be considered that way. You know, as yeah. one of the better referees, I, I really do appreciate that. But the thing is that I just every time I go out there, I say, hey, I can try to give it the best game I got. Like I'm going out there in 15 minutes, I'll go out, I'll say, hey, I'm gonna give them a good game, the best game I can. You know, like I had a game earlier today at uh, Concordia, Vanu was playing another team. So you know, I'm, my legs aren't as fresh or whatever, but I'm gonna run as hard as I can, as fast as I can, and most importantly, try to keep focused. And that's the hard thing. And, Older officials, I think that's what they're good at. Just like older players, they don't have the physical tools. We, we're, we're, we're starting to lack on the physical tools, but I think mentally you can always be sharp, and you just got to be committed, like saying, hey, I'm going to get the best game I can, be an excellent referee, try to make the calls I see, and, and just like that. I think it's just something like that, consistent effort and consistent focus. I think that the players appreciate that. All right, and now some quick questions, quick answers. All right. We're running a little on time. Right. I know you got to go. No problem. Um, first of all, I want to ask you, you've refed a lot of high-profile games in this league. Is there any game that stands out for you as your favorite game that you've refed? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the famous uh, Hurricanes, Montreal's finest. I mean, it went into overtime, and uh, Kevin Challenger caught a touchdown. And uh, that's actually the uh, one of my uh, best buddies. That's his, uh, his nephew. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. It was the only catch he made the whole game, actually. And it was a well-fought game, and the Hurricanes was sort of the end of the Hurricanes that dynasty. Is, yeah. And Montreal Finest was asserting themselves. That was a phenomenal game. I've done a lot of games, uh, like just even in the, in the past year, there's been some, some great games, uh, like a couple teams on, on the rise that you see out there. Uh, I mean, like, well, just like old school, you know, some of the guys I've known for a long time from tackling stuff. 
you know, Division One and Two is always kind of fun. I mean, but when I played, you know, Rage and some of those teams we were playing against, there's a lot of great teams. I, I, I'm a, kind of a fan of players more than teams. Right. You know, so I, I really enjoy like even seeing a guy like Carmine. He's an old timer like me. It's great to see a guy like that that can still throw a knuckleball. You know, I mean, yeah. he's a, still a great player. And there's all kinds of great players. You know, so for me, it's more of a you know that that would be the game though. If there was one, if you had to pick one, 100 no, okay. Hurricanes, Montreal Finals. All right, now what do you, what, obviously you've been refing for a while. What do, what do you hate the most about refereeing? Is there any one thing that irks you a little bit? Uh, so you're saying about the players or about the referees? In general, the whole circumstance of you being a referee, what is it that annoys you on a uh, daily basis? Think, one of the th I don't think it annoys me on a daily basis, but one of the things that annoys me is if you, you call it, well you think you call a solid game and half the team or half the people that are watching hate what you've called because they don't understand football. And good football fans who know the rules, they'll say, hey, you know what, that was a well-officiated game because they understand the rules. You know, when you don't understand the rules, you think you're getting jobbed. When I always, I always feel bad when a team feels they got jobbed. You know, and sometimes I've, I've refed with guys, and guys don't make good calls, or guys have made poor calls, and you know, I've made some poor calls. And you think, wow, like that was a bad call. That 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 hurt that team, you know. And that's when I feel bad. Like when I've when I've done something that I've kind of lessened the game, you know, or like one of my colleagues has lessened the game by not being in position, making a poor call, you know. Like guys are always going to yell and scream, and you know, I one thing that does upset me, I will say sometimes, is when a, a coach or a captain lo loses his mind and goes off on an official, because I think that sets a really bad example for the rest of the team. Teams are going to follow the leaders, you know. So when you're the leader of a team, you should act accordingly. I'm not saying you should never argue a call, but I'm saying when you just lose completely lose your head, as I'm sure you've seen a few times in flash. Sure. Okay. To me, and that's where the referee's got to stay more calm. And that's the hardest, one of the hardest things to do, and that takes a long time to learn. I got a bad temper, so <laughs> it's very hard. If someone's in your face saying things to you, it's really hard to just say, you know, I understand your position, but call stands, and that's hard. You know, that's a little bit tough. All right, and the last question, we'll get you out of here on this Great. one. What do you love the most about refereeing? Well, as a player, uh, everybody remembers when they played, and they, they love to win. You know, everybody loves to win or do well, or whatever. Yeah. And the camaraderie of the guys. And when all the winning stops and the championship stops, and whether you're an all-star player or whatever, you always remember the guys. And I, like I played many, many years ago. Now, 25 years ago, I'll meet guys. Hey, that that bond, especially when you, when you win a championship, you know. And refereeing is a little bit different, but I think the camaraderie of the guys, especially when you've done a good game and you know guys and like guys like uh, Cesare and Ladder and Jose Pita, these are guys I've known a long time. Uh, you know, like Danny Roy is another guy, an old time referee, you've known him for a long time. So we get to do games with those guys. We have a couple of CFL officials here, yeah. and you know, uh, Mish Payne and Old Ben. When you get to do games with those guys and, and you do a good job, to me that's a very satisfying thing. And I think the players appreciate. And they they often come up to us, hey, thanks a lot, Rep. That was a great game. That that gives me a good feeling. And, it makes them happy to play in the league. We get more players. Yeah. And we get more. It works out for everyone, right? Exactly. So I, I think that's the, the thing: the camaraderie, and uh, when you know you've done a good game and, and people recognize it, it's always appreciated. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on here, Leo. Uh, Leo Gervais, head referee of Flag Plus Football. Spring season just starting up, so we'll let you get to your work here. Right. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh, I thought it's a very interesting interview, and obviously, guys. This is the guy you want to seek out on the field. If you have questions, he's always available, and or send him an email or get in contact with this guy. He'll t if you don't know everything, this guy will let you know. And just so you know, Darren, we're always looking for guys, if they're interested maybe in refereeing, I always tell the guys, come over to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> if they are interested, we're always looking for guys, if they'd like to try, we can talk to them and to see their le a level of interest and uh, we'll go from there. We're always looking for a few good men. Absolutely. Or right. girls too. We're looking for girls too. Hey, sure. I think I don't think any of the players will complain. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, thanks a lot again, Leo, and uh, we'll see you next week on Breaking the Hub.